Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. And today we're gonna to talk about the Linux desktop market share. What's the big deal? So as some of you know, I've been away a little bit, a year from doing this, and I've just been using Pop! OS uh, for the past year, not worrying about what else is going, because I had work to do, had life going on. And I started getting back into this and doing some research and I read Linux has a 4% market desktop market share in the entire world. What? When I was doing this just a year ago, it was a little over 1%. And now we're hovering around 4%. I checked today and uh, you know, worldwide it's at 3.8%. And I was like, wow, it's growing. And I was hoping it would grow. Because from my perspective, the more people that are using it, the more people that are invested in it, the more other people develop software for it, develop the operating system, it works out better for everyone. So I'm like, yes. And as you well know, Linux dominates the server space. Linux probably is running in that gas station pump control that you're using. You know, it's everywhere. But when it comes to the desktop space, it's been very, very small. And in the operating system world, obviously Android is king, right? It's got 47% um, over Windows as far as, you know, overall operating systems that are used across all devices. But for the desktop, it's growing. It's grown from 1% to 4% in a year. That's crazy. And I was like, why did this happen? I walk away for just a little bit. I come back and now there's 4%, like from 1% to 4% of people using it. How crazy is that? And I was like, why is that? And I went through and I want to share some of those things with you. But first, I do want to show you uh, the stats real quick. It's not that stats are like super fun. Maybe you find stats fun and that's your, that's your jam. God bless you. This is statscounter.com global stats. So here's the bar graph at the bottom. That's just mapping the trends. And then the, the more raw data is at the top. And you can just see, look at that, Linux 3.8%. I can't believe it. That's too cool. So now you can just see and just select, okay, just United States. That's still 3.78% Linux users. Um, and 5% Chrome OS, and you know, Mac OS is more there, about 22%. But check this out, in India, 14% of the user base uses Linux. That's unbelievable. And I believe either it's already happened or it's happening where India is going to have well over and could be the most populous nation on the planet. So there's a lot pushing that here, but like we just saw, America still has almost 4%. And, you know, go to North America and add in Mexico and Canada, and you're still showing 3.5%. That is unbelievable. And then we can check out a couple other continents here. You know, Asia, you can see Asia uses 5%. 5% of the users use Linux uh, on their desktop. And then in Africa, you're still getting almost 3%. And I'm going, why? Why this wonderful change? And I came up with a couple of things, and I could be right, it could be wrong, something for us to discuss. The first thing I thought about is Windows 11 and Windows 12 hardware requirements. On Windows 10 and devices that were on Windows 10, I don't know if you remember when, when uh, Windows 11 came out, they included this uh, TPM hardware requirement, and it's a trusted platform module, and it was some sort of secure thing uh, for, for everyone to be able to have and use. And a lot of Windows 10 computers didn't have that, even though they met all the other specs that could use it. So, you know, these people are like, this is still a good computer. I wanna still use it. And so they might've moved to Linux. The second is, is now Windows 12 has AI hardware requirements. At least that's the rumor right now. It seems to be that's where it's going. We're not exactly 100% sure. 
But if that's true, that means Windows 10 computers and Windows 11 computers, which are perfectly good, perfectly usable, and they just don't have an AI chip, an MPU, or something in there for Copilot or whatever they're going to have included in Windows 12 whenever that comes out, that's going to cause a problem. And that's millions of computers that could potentially be e-waste or whatever you want to say. But you, sometimes you get connected to a device. It's perfectly good. You don't need it. AI this and AI that. And you can still connect to AI through the cloud. You don't necessarily need TPM to have a good secure system. So people have tried and moved to Linux to see, hey, is this going to work for me? And it looks like it's sticking. Something else, if you're done with Windows, let's say you've used Windows for a while and you're like, I don't want to use Windows anymore. I'm going to use Mac OS. And, you know, that seems to be a pretty big deal, at least in North America, for people to use. But, man, the cost of a Mac and the upgrade of a Mac is ridiculous. We all know it's true. They're good hardware and the software works great with the hardware. And that's what makes Macs work well together. That's why I use them for a long time. So I get it, but people don't want to spend that kind of money, especially when uh, the baseline model starts with eight gigabytes of RAM. And some people say, oh, it's plenty. And most people are like, no, it's not. My perfectly good laptop or desktop works great, but I can't get security updates past next year. I don't want to spend money on a Mac. Let me use Linux. Another thing that I, I see that potentially has really helped grow this market share, grow it, is the Steam Deck and gaming on Linux. That Proton layer that has allowed for so many Windows games to work on Linux has really opened up, hey, I don't have to get a brand new computer. I don't have to do uh, all these other things to get my computer to run a game. And that's really great. And on top of that, because of the Steam Deck and its optimization for essentially an integrated graphics card, I know it's specialized to them, but that means that Anyone using some of these modern integrated graphics cards, you might be able to do some pretty decent gaming nowadays. And that's exciting. That means I don't have to have Windows if I don't want Windows. And that also means that I don't have to get rid of this device. People are tired of having to pay and replace devices. And especially if you look at today's landscape, most people do most of their computing, if they're honest with themselves, on their phones on their mobile device. And so because of that, a laptop or a desktop is less important. Uh, you use it for specific programs or a specific use case. And that means you're not as willing to just upgrade your computer as easily. Who knows within the next year or two, especially when Windows 12 comes out and the better that the Proton layer for gaming works, man, we're talking growth and you see everywhere across the world, an embracing of Linux. And I can't wait to see where things are going to go. Does this mean within the next two to four years, we're going to get over 10%? Is there a possibility that over the next 10 years, that Mac OS will be taken over by Linux? I don't know. And that's exciting to me. I'll Let me share just real quick something that matters to me. I use DaVinci Resolve. I know it's proprietary software, but for me and what I do in my day job, it is great and it is pretty vital. And for me, it's a package deal, which is what I like about it. I'm not having to pay a monthly subscription like uh, the Adobe suite of things, which are perfectly great and good. But within DaVinci Resolve, I have color grading. I even have pretty great DOS situation for my audio working in there in a great video editing situation. It's got some simple, easy features. And the more people that are going to be on Linux, the more people that are going to be using DaVinci Resolve through Linux. And that means the potential for that company, Blackmagic Design, to put more money into development for Linux. There's a couple of weird things that we have to do right now, some older libraries that you have to use to get it to work. I'm hoping, you know, maybe a flat pack version, maybe, maybe something else. I don't know. But if that, that's just in one lane, like my own little tiny lane, and you probably use Linux for very different reasons. But if 
that happens, it's going to grow. It's going to make it better. And maybe there'll be an open source alternative that will be just as good or better than DaVinci Resolve. And I hope that happens too. But anyways, just a little discussion. Share with me in your in the comments below. Uh, what are your thoughts on this growth? Do you, is there something I missed? Why has it been growing? And uh, let's keep doing this Linux thing and see you tomorrow.